Thank you very much for the introduction. It's a pleasure to be able to talk to you today about Scotland's uh, approach to, to innovation. Um, Scotland, the UK operates a, a system of devol devolved governance. So that means the Scottish government uh, has the ability to bring its own focus on Scotland in terms of economic development and also its uh, approach to innovation. So that's what I'm going to be talking through today and how Scotland aims to bring its own contribution into the overall UK system of innovation. The organisation I represent is Scottish Development International and it's the international inward investment and trade development arm of the Scottish Government and it links in, uh, it's actually the international arm of the development agencies. So I'll be drawing on uh, a broad base of, of information to present the point. In the introduction, you heard my previous um, activities. So as a former researcher and a person who moved from research into corporate planning to promote research within the, a large corporation, then into the business world, um, but always having that uh, passion about how innovation is stimulated and how it through, moves through the stages into business. I'll actually be talking a, a little bit uh, about the Scottish approach through that lens of experience. One of the things I, I thought I'd just start a little bit, I think there's interesting lessons to be learned from history. There was a period of the Scottish Enlightenment I'm not sure how many people have heard of that, but on this slide, you'll probably recognize some of the famous names uh, from history, Adam Smith for economics, for example, James Watt with the, the steam engine. And the 18th century uh, characterized uh, an outpouring of intellectual and scientific uh, accomplishments uh, from Scotland. But the interesting thing is, but why did that happen? What was it that came together to allow that innovation to happen at that time. Interestingly, at that time, it was when um, King James actually moved his seat to London, and the Parliament was also uh, moved to London. So overall, it was a time when you think maybe it wouldn't have led to so much innovation. But I think there's probably a number of factors, and I must say it's still a, a lot of debate, but Scotland was one of the first places to institute uh, a universal school education, and that happened in 1696. And there was also um, a very sort of liberal amount of thought at that time, and people were very much looking to abroad and pulling in ideas from abroad. So the Scots of that time were very internationalists, internationalist in their outlook. There was a tremendous focus on learning, and learning was respected. And at that point, in the early 17th century, Scotland actually had five universities with respect to England's two. The other thing that was there was there was a, a framework, an intellectual inter infrastructure of mutually supporting institutions. So you had the universities, yes, we had lots of reading societies, libraries, periodicals, museums, actually Masonic lodges as well. So there was a, a fabric uh, that encouraged debate. And also at that time, there was a, like, like I say, a liberal uh, essence to this, where people did not want to be swayed by authoritative opinion or dogma, but wanted to seek the truth through objective evidence and reason. So I think. When we look at that, maybe one of the lessons we can draw that um, you might not be able to select where innovation is going to occur, but you can create an environment that is supportive on, for innovation. And within that, we can see factors like there needs to be a focus on learning, on education. It needs to be challenging conventional wisdom. There needs to be an encouragement of debate and there needs to be a lot of mutually supporting infrastructures and uh, infra, sorry mutually supporting institutions and infrastructure and also some basic motivators or drivers to to move things forward so i'll be coming back to those themes of those drivers through the the presentation but um, first of all 
Let me show you this uh, video. In here you will see many images of innovation that have occurred since that time. of flashing, flashing images there, but hopefully you can see a whole span of innovation uh, that occurred over that period. Now it's one thing to um, have that background of innovation when you're at the centre of industrialisation and taking that out to the world, but in today's world it's different. And as a small nation, innovation is absolutely critical to remain competitive in today's global world. So I'd like to start um, at, at how that can, uh, well, it obviously needs to be recognised uh, from right from levels of government right into the very fabric of, of society. And that's one of the aims that the Scottish Government set out to do um, with its Scotland Can Do um, statement, of, statement of intent. So the whole purpose of this um, paper that was written back in 2013 and followed up in 2014 was to outline a clear recognition that if Scotland is to achieve sustainable economic growth and create opportunities for everyone to flourish, then we must work together to accelerate entrepreneurship and innovation across Scotland. You can see some of the key factors there. Um, developing capability, creating ambition, uh, networking, getting people ne networked in, not just within in Scotland, but across the UK, across Europe, internationally. And being able to be plugged in to demand in opportunities. Interesting thing, this is not a policy. It starts at the top with a shared statement of intent. So this is done through consultation, working with many people, um, so that it, it's basically an expression of that intent to have a focus around innovation. And importantly, it is not telling people what to do, it focuses on asking everyone what they can do to be more innovative and to contribute to that process of innovation. As we saw from the previous uh, example, whether it's uh, regular meetings in tea rooms uh, across Scotland to discuss the latest state of affairs, developments in technology. Mutually supportive institutions are very uh, important. And some of those are, are shown across uh, on this chart, which shows the range of business support. And it covers both private and pub public sector. Uh, you can see the enterprise agencies at the, in the middle of the second line from the top. But it includes lots of areas. And one of the, the key things, the support needs to be very comprehensive. 
uh, one of the biggest barriers are to innovation starts at the beginning. So ways where people can start to become part of the process, become recognised and then become able to uh, request levels of funding or other degrees of support are very important. eSpark, which is on the, the bottom row, um, Entrepreneurial Spark is a five-month business accelerator. Now, this is an accelerator that people can go into, and it offers startup support, business mentoring, workshops, office space, IT, and facilities, all free within that period in a very collaborative environment. So it's a chance of, to take away or try to reduce that barrier. If you've got the time, there's a place where, you, in the idea, there's a place where you can come and really sort of kickstart that idea. The government direction uh, is there, but then that needs to roll down into the economic development agencies and other agencies. Uh, this is our 2015, 2018 business plan. In it, we have a, a key focus around what we call the four I's. Uh, those four I's being investment, innovation, interna internationalization, and inclusive growth. Inclusive growth meaning that everybody, wherever they are in Scotland, whether they're in a major city like Edinburgh or Glasgow, or in the Highlands and Islands, should be able to be part of the, the total system and in, be able to be part of and gain from the benefit that overall accrues. So within the plan, in specifically with respect to innovation, uh, we have some key targets that we, we look to aim, and that's in to increase the R&D spend um, from some 500 million to 650 million. So this is additional R&D, sorry, that's an additional R&D investment of 500 to 650 million by the companies, by companies. Uh, but again, working to get companies to look at additional turnover from innovation. So get that uh, an extra 700 to 850 million in turnover. Efficiency improvements and innovation around uh, active businesses, companies that are actually actively working on processes to increase their uh, innovation, increase that between th 2,400 to 3,000. This overall approach looks at innovation very broadly. Um, so it's, it's trying to move away from just a product development, but really recognize that, you, yes, you do need product in innovators, but also process innovation, service innovation. Um, is, so innovation really in everything that we do. In order to, to have a program like this, there does need to be an assessment of, of where you are and try to understand where you want to go. So we have a, a dedicated uh, sector innovation team that has, one, looked to understand good practice around the world. And this infographic throws up some of those, those areas. Um, in, Good characteristics are a good characteristic of an innovative nation is it happens in all types of business and there's high levels of business r and d spend and associated salaries, a focus on human capital and there's clear links between the innovation and economic growth. The next thing comes to to really have a focus on your uh, where you are in terms of the innovation yourself, and what we find here is we've got a good level of education, um, but we really, one of the key things we're looking at is to increase spend. This all fits in overall into to a scheme, and you can see the, this pipeline of business innovation where you get a point from uh, the Scottish Government being in innovation, uh, setting it as a major priority, uh, the enterprise agencies working to ensure the innovation journey for the clients and customers within that. The funding council's coming in, and then we heard before about Innovate UK, and it's, that's not just a matter of access uh, to funding, but it's a clear thing about uh, linking in um, innovative activity, the smaller companies, into the larger enterprises. And then this has to go right down into the local authorities so that uh, they are involved, they are the people who are making contact with the companies on a day-to-day on a -day basis. 
and our companies will probably first contact. So there needs to be a plan and there's a clear aim and at the top of this you can see we have a plan to reach the upper quartile of the OECD business innovation performance. One of the other mechanisms that's, that's been really key is the use of the Scottish Innovation Centres. And they're a structure that's been set up uh, in the key areas indicated here, where they aim to identify issues in industry and then fund, put together and fund programmes where industry and academia can work together to, to solve those issues. So again, it's a, a key approach in trying to translate university uh, excellence into commercial activity. I'd like to give an example of uh, an institute that really has a very strong program around innovation, and I'll pick out the School of Informatics. Informatics is the science of information and how to take, uh, in, in jargon words, it might be more big data, but informatics is the cerebral science that allows us to understand structures within that data and try to present it in a way that has some meaning to us or extract me a meaning from that data. The School of Informatics um, is of, of real scale. It's actually the largest informatics research center in Europe. And it has more world-leading and internationally excellent research than any other uh, researchers than any other uh, leading research, sorry, than any other UK university. That excellence comes from the, the bottom part of that, that slide. And it's very international in outlook. So you've got the focus on high learning, but you've got this very uh, good focus and pull for, from talent from across the world. Unfortunately, uh, it doesn't have the flag of Japan there. Um, although one of the key lecturers is from J Japan in that, in that group. It is an institute, it partners very widely and is linked in to some of the main programs that uh, are running in the UK, through Europe and also internationally. And you can see uh, through the partner network that they have, in the key areas for informatics that they focus on, robotics and autonomous systems, data science, and pervasive parallelism, there's a very strong set of partners for each of those areas. So this is coming to that networking and uh, mutual support side. One of the areas that they've really focused on is encouraging staff and students to be entrepreneurial. In this program, the Prospect program ran from 2006 to 2011. It has a successor, the Aspect program, but looking at this one, you can see when it finished, it had 43 startups and, and spin outs that orig originated from that program, and now it's, that's up to, to 60, again, coming from that program, resulted in some 120 products. At the time of end, it was 17 million, and with the ongoing uh, program with the, the startups and spin-outs, it's up to some 100 million uh, funding that's been excuse me, raised. One of the results uh, of this is if we look back in, in 2006, in Edinburgh, we had a, a number of um, companies that were spin-out in that area of informatics. But if we look into the, the present day, then we see that actually all these spin-outs have produced a, a really strong technical ecosystem. And we've got some strong incubators there, for instance, Codebase, which provide a, a very supportive environment for the companies that are, are spun out. One of the um, key things that uh, has happened as well is they are, have run a program called Engage, Invest, Exploit. Um, this runs every year. It covers areas like IT, digital, life science, and energy sectors. And what they do is they recruit uh, student projects or company projects, and they run a five-month program. So it's, this is slide is specifically pointing to an event but there's a whole pro five month program which incorporates a boot camp, mentoring, articulation, uh, pitching, and networking. 
And this has actually attracted now 100 registered uh, investors over Europe. It's the premier showcase technology, inve technology investor showcase and has been growing in its uh, international side as well. So it's a very, been a very successful way of getting young entrepreneurs in front of investors and getting them onto the early stages of the, the growth network. As a university, uh, it has the most, since if you look at uh, spin-outs from the end of 2000, it has the most startups in the UK. In fact, the whole, whole process of innovation in Scotland is quite good. Of a, a UK total of 1982 um, startups, Scotland has 571 over that period, which is almost 30%, 29% of that total. I put the emphasis around the Institute of Informatics, but I would mention uh, Harriet Watt, which has an example of the Open Systems Laboratory. Two of their spin-outs is one has been Hydrazen, which does uh, uh, nature mimic the users like the dolphin sauna, so it's a biomimetic uh, technology. And Seabite, which is the brains behind the automated unattended ve underwater vehicles. And I was very pleased to see on the 30th of last month that Kawasaki Heavy Industries announced a research program with uh, the Open System Laboratory in Harriet Watt. Just shortly, I'd just like to mention quickly uh, an activity that we have of support, which is around the Scottish Investment Bank. So we have our own investment arm, which started in 2003 and was, became under the terminology of the Scottish Investment Bank in 2010. So they have a whole portfolio of things that they do, uh, from support, the blue areas are where their own funds, and uh, external funds. Interesting thing, I'd just like to mention on these two ones, one is the co-investment fund is where we accredit partners, and those partners bring deals and we invest with them. The partners do the due diligence on the deal. With the Scottish Venture Fund, uh, this allows larger deals to be covered, and we actually cover the, uh, do the due diligence in that. Um, today, we have a, a portfolio of some 270 companies, and in the materials that you'll be able to download online, you'll see some examples of this. I guess what, one of the things I wanted to mention at the end was in the creative industry areas, um, we have what would be the first uh, unicorn that came out of that program of funding, FanDuel, and another one, which is the Skyscanner, um, which was actually Scotland's first unicorn. If we look at uh, GP Bullhound, they have identified what they think are another 12 potential unicorns uh, in Scotland, and uh, have listed up 149 potential company, high potential companies within that uh, overall infrastructure. Oops, going wrong way. And I'd like to end there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Baker.